congratulations. Looking forward to working with her down in Annapolis. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Um, Kerwin. Uh, Kerwin passed both houses um, this legislative session. It is now waiting to be signed by the governor. He has not signed that piece of legislation yet. Um, it was a very busy legislative session, as you know. Uh, we had over uh, 2,400 bills that came through the legislature um, this session, uh, about 1,400 uh, in the House and about 1,056 in the Senate. And so it was a very robust uh, legislative session. Uh, the main uh, pieces of legislation that uh, uh, everyone was um, keeping their eye on was the education blueprint for Maryland's uh, future, which was Senate Bill 1030, uh, better known as the Kerwin Commission. Um, this piece of legislation uh, will fundamentally um, change it's Cheryl Pesto is coming out chair, and we want to thank her thank for arriving. And Madam Chair, we're just getting started, and I was just giving a report on Kerwin. And so the Kerwin Commission is the major legislation uh, that was passed by both houses that would um, it, it is a $2.2 billion endeavor um, that the uh, state legislature is undertaking to, to fund our education systems around, around the state of Maryland. Uh, they were focused on um, um, teacher retention, teacher pay, uh, special education, um, uh, accountability. One of the major uh, pieces of Kerwin, uh, which the governor um, championed, was to have an accountability uh, for this major major piece of legislation. So in that legislation, there there's um, an inspector general uh, position that was um, that was uh, that was passed, um, which will give uh, that person the authority to um, make sure that Kerwin, when implemented, when the governor does sign the bill, um, um, you know, is accountable. Uh, one of the things that they were saying during the Kerwin Commission uh, when they were meeting was, that um, this type of legislation um, about 20 years ago was, was done under Thornton. And the two pieces that everyone felt looking back on Thornton was that the accountability piece wasn't there and the funding mechanism. So what they wanted to do with Kerwin was make sure that uh, with this particular legislation that they have accountability uh, and rightfully so, and, and, and again, I would say, that, you know, the governor really uh, pushed for that, for the inspector general position, but also to have funding, uh, to make sure that these ideas um, um, would have funding. Um, so as we speak, uh, the funding, all of the funding formulas have not been worked out. They actually will have a working group through the, sum through the summer uh, in the state legislature that's going to look at um, how these funding formulas uh, are going to work for the, for the state and the local jurisdictions. You know, what part of this uh, funding are we accountable for? So right now, we don't know. Um, they're going to work on that through the, through the summer. Uh, next year, we will know how much Baltimore County uh, will have to, uh, you know, um, put in our budget to, to, to um, you know, help fund this. Uh, so that's a little bit of a, you know, a stress for local jurisdictions right now who are trying to create their budgets as we speak, as you, as you know, on the school board, uh, you know, not knowing how these Kerwin um, uh, Commission uh, will impact us financially. So we're still waiting. We're still waiting for that. The governor um, also has about $200 million at his discretion that he, he, he can release for Kerwin um, that will help to get it to get the, you know, the first year started. And uh, then we'll look at, you know, the out years next, you know, 2020, 2021 and 2022 for funding. Um, so that was, that was uh, one of the highlights for, for us uh, was, was, you know, getting that passed. The other bill that we were particularly interested in was House Bill 727, which was our capital funding bill. Uh, a lot of the local jurisdictions around the state um, were advocating for that uh, particular um, uh, funding uh, for our school buildings. And uh, our county executive actually said that that was his only um, priority this legislative session. It passed the House, um, House Bill 727, but it failed 
uh, in the Senate. Um, the rationale was that Kerwin, because Kerwin is a $2.2 billion endeavor, um, um, that there wasn't much money left over to, to, you know, to fund uh, House Bill 727, uh, again, which was, um, you know, one of our priority bills. Um, we are hopeful that next year when we go back to the legislature that we can revisit House Bill 727 and that uh, we are, you know, we'll be uh, successful next year in, in getting additional funding for our, our, our capital programs. And again, that affects us locally because, you know, as school board members in, in, in Baltimore County, we're trying to create our budgets. You know, we have a 10-year plan that we hope will be funded um, where we can um, actually out, you know, out, outline uh, our capital projects. But it's hard to do that when you don't know how much money um, you're, you're working with. So uh, right now we're in limbo a little bit uh, because of uh, um, these unknowns. Uh, I want to thank Eileen for getting this packet together uh, for us. If you, if you look at the um, one of your handouts, it's the final board report of 2019. And what she's done, uh, and I really want to commend her, is put together all the, all the bills that were passed thus far. Um, and, and some of them have been signed uh, by the governor. You will see that noted in, in, the, uh, uh, in the bill. Uh, if, it's, if it's returned passed, that means it's waiting to be signed by the governor. The governor has two more signing um, schedule for the 13th of May and I believe the 26th, 23rd. the 23rd of May. Um, so hopefully, uh, Kerwin and a lot of these other bills that you see here uh, will have been signed by then. Um, in Maryland, if the governor does not sign a bill and he doesn't have to, it can sit uh, in his drawer or in the desk, as they say, and, and um, it passes automatically without his, without his signature. Um, or he couldn't, he, or he can veto. Uh, the governor can veto. Uh, there are a couple bills that uh, were vetoed this year that was overridden by the um, legislature. That's in your packet also. Uh, one of them was the school start and, and end date uh, that, the, that was passed and, and uh, I mean, which was vetoed by the governor and overridden by the state legislature. So I think Eileen has done a great job of uh, comprehensively of getting all these bills that we can look at and, and look over and, um, and given an up-to-date status as to where they are. Uh, I think she was on site today or yesterday uh, up updating this. Uh, as we get um, the bill signings, we will get to this committee the updated uh, version of this and uh, keep, you, keep you posted on that. Um, we wanted to take one extra step in and getting you information on the bills by um, putting this together, this next sheet, which, which uh, again, Ms. Eileen Rosenberg did a great job. What she did was kind of uh, categorize the bills so that if you're interested in the uh, business service related bills, um, th they're in, under one heading, curriculum and instruction related bills, and um, uh, human resource related bills. So those also, is, and um, research and accountability bills. So she kind of categorized these and, and made it easier to read or reference if you want to look up certain bills. Um, I thought we did a good job um, this year in Annapolis. Uh, Cheryl Pastor, Kathleen Causey, uh, Makita Scott, and I believe, uh, um, Lily Rowe, all were in Annapolis from our Government Relations Committee um, to, to see how the legislature, legislature actually worked, but also uh, to weigh in uh, and speak to uh, the delegates and senators. Um, we had a chance to speak um, to our Senate delegation uh, during this past session. And uh, I can tell you, just having a presence there and the school board members um, showing up, uh, uh, it meant a lot. Um, it showed that we're engaged that, and that, um, um, you know, we're supporting our legislature, our legislators on certain key bills. And we will continue, continue that next year. I, I think uh, reconstituting this uh, particular uh, committee 
and um, b being our first time in Annapolis um, this year, I think we did a really good job. Uh, but I think next year we'll be even more prepared to make sure that we are, you know, we have a presence um, at, at those hearings. And uh, if, if board members want to testify on certain bills, we'll certainly um, make sure that we, uh, you know, facilitate that to and coordinate that. Uh, but I, I must say that we have a, uh, Baltimore County has uh, uh, a great representation um, on, on the Senate side and, and on the House side. We have uh, uh, key members in Baltimore County that are in leadership positions in the state legislature, which is always good, uh, head of committees and subcommittees. And so uh, a lot of times you have to be strategic when you're, when you're advocating. And um, having those um, committee chairs and subcommittee chairs, and, and again, um, uh, the Speaker of the House, um, Delegate Adrian Jones, uh, that puts us in good stead. So it's just a matter of learning, uh, us continuing uh, to work with our legislators and be strategic in, 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 in what we're advocating for. So we, I'm really personally looking forward to next year and uh, in the legislative session and advocating for those things um, um, that we really uh, need and, and care, care about. Um, with that, if anybody has any particular bills that they want to discuss or any comments about uh, this past legislative session, I'll open it up. Ms. Rowe? So there's a bill in here that I saw about um, 725. It's uh, public school student discipline restorative approaches. Yeah, um, do you have a, a summary of what, what is that going to mean for Baltimore County? What, what discipline things does it do that we might not already be doing in our policies? And one of the things, and thank you. Ms. Rowe, where are you? I'm sorry. Oh, mm -hmm. so it's on page. It, House Bill 725. Yeah. It's a 725. Thank House you. 20, yeah. House Bill 725, Public School Student Discipline Restorative Appro Approaches. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Rowe, thank you for that, because I actually forgot to say one thing that I think is, is really important. What I learned in the state legislature this year um, was that a lot of the things that they were doing on the state level, we were already doing um, um, here in Baltimore County. It, it, you know, there were some jurisdictions I, I felt when I looked at how they were, um, you know, approaching certain things. It was like they had to get it started, you know, if, when the legislation came down. But for us, and, I, and it was a quite like a high percentage, uh, uh, we were already doing in some form or fashion. So even like this bill, uh, restorative practices, for us, it just means continuing to do what we've already been, what the school board has already been implementing. Um, but now statewide, they're, they're, they're um, codifying this, saying that principals have to, around the state, have to put restorative um, practices, you know, in their, in their discipline uh, um, um, standards in, in their schools. So I felt good about that when I was in the, you know, down there this, this past legislative session. There was another um, uh, bill that talked about testing uh, for children at an early age for certain disabilities and we dyslexia and we were already uh, doing a lot of that when I talked to Dr. McComas and I can just repeat that over and over um, um, so and that, that's good I want to want y'all to hear that as as, as board members you're, you're you're working you're doing the work but a lot of times you you don't have that perspective from when you compare yourself to other jurisdictions and and uh, so I just want to let you know that um, uh, a lot of these things we're, we're doing. Uh, yeah, e even in our budget, we're getting... I, I, do, I, I, I do want to go back to um, Mrs. Rowe's question because it is a good one uh, in terms of this bill. You're correct. We were doing some things. We have um, alternative education and we have some restorative practices, but what this bill does and you just alluded to that, is that it's to bring it together. So statewide, we're looking at many of the same kinds of things because even within our own jurisdiction, as well as others, we're not necessarily consistent. And since both of us are on policy review 
and those are the things that come up. We do need to look at and make sure that from school to school we are consistent and that principals have a viable plan. Every s principal has a viable plan that the community person, the director, community soup will see and that they are following and that um, from one school to the next, everyone is in sync. And that is one of the issues that we want to address in Baltimore County as well. So that's, that's why I asked about that, because we just finished bringing our discipline policies into compliance with state law. And it looks like, based on this, we may have to adjust some of those policies again, because I think where we're at with um, restorative practices and conscious discipline, although I don't see conscious discipline specifically named in here, but I think conscious discipline might be part of restorative practices. It's kind of is similar, is that some schools are using their Title I funds to get these materials and do this, and other schools have had some training but not a lot, and that it's it's something Baltimore County is definitely ahead of the curve on, and we're definitely doing a lot more than other jurisdictions, and we definitely have goals to try to do even more than that. But this makes it a legal mandate. It's a mandate, exactly. And so now we have to bring all of our schools into compliance. Um, and so it'll be from system to system. Yeah. So if a child moves, one of the issues, which is why this bill was brought up, mm -hmm. is that if a child, let's say, leaves Baltimore County and goes to Montgomery County, the rules might be different. There may right. not be any continuity into it. So this was brought forward to try to do um, um, to what you are, are referring to, have some statewide continuity and making sure that every school. I think this is too part of the acknowledgement that our children have social emotional learning needs and that Absolutely. as a state, as a school systems, we can't ignore social emotional learning needs. Right. That's and right. that this is what addresses that at an early age and people have been asking for that. So I'm glad that it's mm -hmm. something that we're going to be required to do. Right. Um, I think that it might be a good idea if we can get a copy of that bill and send it over to PRC. So that okay. because at some point in time, if it's law, we're going to have to get recommendations from staff to look at those policies again to make sure that they comply with the new laws. Mm -hmm. they, um, and I've talked to a number of the um, um, the delegates about this. Um, that certainly is what needs to happen. They're not all very clear. I mean, it, it wasn't tight, you know what I'm saying, that the concept is there. Mm -hmm. it, we have the concept, but we don't have the filler yet. So they're going to, you, do you know what I mean? They don't, we don't have, we have, they have the bill. You see this. But paring it down so that every system will know exactly what the policies and the rules should look like are not there yet. And what I've, what I've um, uh, observed in the legislature this, this past session was that they called that pres prescriptive legislation. And they tend to try to stay away from prescriptive legislation because um, sometimes they do, but a lot of times they don't because they want to leave some leeway for when it comes down to the local jurisdictions, you know your, your district and, and your needs better than anyone. And so a lot of times they'll purposely not make it too prescriptive and tie the very educator's hands at, at the school board level uh, on, on things that they're probably not, they're, they're legislators, so they're, they're not, you know, they're, they're not educators, uh, you know, some are. Right. Uh, so I, I did notice that during the legislature, um, there was a lot of cautious effort to, to, to not make uh, legislation so prescriptive that you're actually tying the hands of school boards and, and, and superintendents to implement things. So 
Um, and that's what this is saying. If you right. look at this wording, it's right. requiring right. every school system right. to come up with a plan. A multi-year plan. And yeah. that a multi-year plan that they will use. Because while I was trying to get here, um, I was talking to someone mm -hmm. um, from a school about an incident, one of my schools, uh, about an incident that happened yesterday. And under our current policy in our handbook, the child would have gone to the superintendent's designated child is back in school today, even right. though someone went to Concentra. Mm -hmm. So we know that that was an in-house decision that was made based on right. what they were told that the place was, what was told. So what this, this bill is asking is that whether you go to school A or school B or school mm -hmm. C, if the handbook says this is what happens, you know, we, we deal with some in-school restorative practices right. or we go to another level that's outside, that everybody is going to have the same formula for what they did right. to get to that point versus it being from school to school. That's I could say it just basically question. seems like it creates some consistency. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. With in a system, them exactly. two system. Exactly. Okay, that's ex excellent. Very, very important. And uh, so that kind of that ends my report, um, Madam Chair. Did you want me to turn it back over to you? Just for a moment. First of all, I want to um, apologize uh, for my lateness. I was moving quickly, but I couldn't handle exit 24. <laughs> Took a detour, and there was an accident at Joppa and um, Joppa and Bologna, at, and Bologna. And so then everybody had to pull over. So, so it was it was wonderful. But I I, I do I hope everyone is all right on yeah. that's out there. But I want to thank all of you for or each of you not all each of you, um, for your your willingness to stay so we can do this today. So thank you and um, Eileen, Ms. Rosen. I want to um, thank you for all of the work that you have done. All of the work that you have done on preparing <laughs> these materials for us <laughs> and, and making this comedy show funny. Okay, have, or have some sense to it. So thank you. you. You've done a yeoman's job indeed. But again, I want to thank particularly um, you, Lily and um, and Tony, you were way before the curve today getting here, mm -hmm. and that's normally what I like. And Mahikita was right on the heels there, so <laughs> that everyone was ready to start, other than the chair. Bless you. So thank you so much for that, for that, and for that commitment. Um, I'm I'm going to skip to the to the closing before we get to um, the dates, only to say that I agree with Mr. Baysmore, and I've heard from each of you uh, in different ways. Just to, and other people, um, our board chair has said it um, repeatedly, just how important this committee is, and I look forward to us having a whole school year. Uh, to prepare for the session so that we're on point when they come back mm -hmm. and, and, and ready to question them and to hold them accountable and then getting through session and uh, Makita, uh, Ms. Scott having the opportunity to really attach yourself to MABE and all of that. So I see next year we're going to be on fire, and they're either going to love us or be very, very afraid of us, mm -hmm. okay, in terms of what, or a little bit of both. And maybe a little bit of both is what's really appropriate, that we really are advocating 
for our children in in many, many ways. So I'm excited about what we will do. And saying that, I'd like to segue to our meeting dates. If you will look at that, uh, Mr. Baysmore and I looked at these dates, and, and he, because he has the knowledge and uh, the wherewithal to look at some dates, actually, that we thought would lead us into session, get us in session, mm -hmm. and then out of session. So I'm opening it up for your feedback on these dates. We compared all these dates to the existing school calendar already. Has that been done? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. See how we turn the uh, sheet notes, everything. And they're based around session also. They're based around session. Okay. They're pretty, been we were uh, strategic in, in, yeah. in planning these. I don't have any additional comments. They're fine. I'm just trying to figure that I have no internet again. I'm just trying to find out when Holy Week is next year. <laughs> I know, well, you know how it is. No, it's not. I'm Orthodox, so it's Eastern Orthodox Holy Week. Madam Chair, did you, did, was um, Dr. Hayden here when you, came in, he was here. He was here. He and was here. He, he had to leave. He had to leave. Okay. Right. Okay. And he had to leave. Okay. So we're, we're okay. All right. We're just going to have, I think they're okay. Okay. And if, if Mrs. Rowe, you find that there's a conflict, we will just have to, if I have to pick up Mr. Hayden, we'll just have to make sure that he's here or maybe we'll acquire another member along the journey. So just check that out and let us. And certainly we have enough time uh, um, yeah. to make a change if you find that we need to do that. Right. Okay. So we, we, will we make a motion a tonight to adopt yes. these? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh. Um, do you want me to make a motion? Okay. Make a motion to adopt the following dates for meeting dates for the 2019-2020 school year. Um, October 16th, 2019, January 15th, 2020, February 12th, 2020, March 11th, 2020, April 8th, 2020, and May 20th, 2020. And I second. Thank you, Jackie. Um, any further discussion about these dates? Mm -hmm. That being said, Anyone opposed? No, ma'am. Then this is the motion carries. Accepted. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Rose. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would you like to say anything? Because you're such an integral part. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an integral part of what we do. And I, and I do mean that. We, we, we could not do this. I, there's no way. This is more generation of paper and policy than I think our committees, maybe other than PRC. So we, we thank you so much. I, I will mm -hmm. say that the copy of the charts that you now have are the ones that will be in board docs for the, the board meeting. Mm -hmm. And then Correct. what I'll do as the governor signs the rest of them, I'll mark them and send them to the Just committee. Send them. Mm -hmm. And I, I also want to echo uh, uh, Cheryl uh, to this board, uh, this committee, I mean, uh, working together. Um, uh, we all had a lot of patience and, you know, this first year being down in Annapolis. But I, I'm really excited and looking forward to next year uh, because I think we're just going to have a really good presence there. Um, I'm excited that you know, Delegate Adrian Jones is the speaker. That's tremendous. That's one, the person who didn't want it, you know, 
re received it, and uh, and and it was a great choice because, um, and I actually was there when when all of this was happening. Um, it, it was almost like a healing um, vote too. She was voted unanimously uh, by Democrats and Republicans, and because they had went through so much, you know, upheaval and turmoil in that process, um, um, that they wanted someone that could bring everybody together. And, and she has high character, um, she's well respected, and she certainly has the experience because she actually was Speaker Pro Tem and filled in for the Speaker when he couldn't, uh, uh, you know, attend due, due to his health needs. And also want to just um, send our condolences to his family, uh, uh, Mike Bush from our committee. Uh, he was a great leader. Um, so we're looking forward to the session, and I think we have a great committee here, actually, and I'm looking forward to getting down to Annapolis and advocate. Uh, for those things that um, that we care about. Thank you. And I, I would just like to throw out that just as a presence that you start thinking about um, when session opens, that maybe we take a field trip mm -hmm. down as a committee mm -hmm. um, to make a presence there. Don't they have a day where everybody goes down and meets all the new delegates and mm -hmm. That, that might be a good time to go. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of good dates down there that mm -hmm. we, we want to make sure that you're aware of, what I call one-stop shopping, because we know how busy everyone is. Mm -hmm. And so there's certain events that if, if we show up at, we can see all of our delegates, senators, the, the, the leaders um, uh, um, down there, and, and it's, it's real exciting. And, and that type of networking um, is invaluable. So and I'd like for you to pick the day. What mm -hmm. I, I want to see, because I go down for two, two different groups now. It used to be three, mm -hmm. and it's just like going in a maze, and you're trying to catch people, and they are trying not to be caught. And, and so you end up having coffee in Danish. So I would like for you, in light of this, to pick a day, one of those days, when we can go and Baltimore County can have our own presence, that they know we're there, we're in, right. in the place. That's, that's critical. What, uh, uh, Madam Chair, was that's critical, the timing, because they're so busy. They do so much work in a short period of time that you have, have to be strategic and when you go down because um, you don't want to do a disservice either to our legislators when they're running from meeting to meeting to, 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 to committee meeting and they don't really have time. And so that can be very awkward. So um, if we're strategic and pick, pick when we're there, when they can actually, we can get their, you know, full undivided attention, um, they love that. Um, the last thing they want to do is see, see constituents there, and, I, and they have to run across the hall and be at a committee meeting in five minutes and see their constituents, you know, and um, uh, so we can be strategic and, uh, you know, pick, pick when we can be down there. And it also gives us an opportunity as a committee to be out together and in sync to make sure that our interests and our initiatives and our direction are the same. We have a board, but if the committee is going to have any substance to it, we should be able to go to our board substantively mm -hmm. and and our, even our board seeing us uh, in sync with issues and directions and each of us bringing back um, not just from our local constituents but other people with whom we speak on the board. I think out that's the reason you brought it up way back when we were first, um, Ms. Rowe, when we were first um, uh, installed and we were sitting at Greenwood and you asked about having this committee. You remember that, don't you? I didn't make that up, did I? No. Uh, okay. And, and I remember you asking about that and so it was revived. And so if it's going to be revived and we're going to do it, mm -hmm. then let's do it mm -hmm. and not make this a pretend mm -hmm. committee. And one, one of the things we'll do too, Madam Chair, in, in our October meeting, um, we'll, we'll talk about our internal communication because things move so fast there. It's probably, um, and we'll figure it out, e emailing, have a group email 
where I may say, hey, can I want to get this information to you as, as a committee. Um, here's what we recommend. Here's what I'm recommending based on what I'm hearing. Um, Mabe, um, uh, Makita, I'm really excited about that. Uh, next year, I'll be at those meetings with you uh, at Mabe. They're very informative. John Willems and Mabe does a tremendous job um, advocating for um, local school school boards. So there there may be times when we may need a letter quickly or something. Um, so we'll figure out how we can communicate um, rather quickly if we need a letter. Uh, that, that has to be submitted or, or something like that. Because um, that internal uh, communication is going to be important too because it does, as, it starts slow, and but then that second week, they're off and running up until midnight at sign and die. Uh, and, and it's really, um, you know, it's, it's kind of exciting actually. Um, so we'll figure that out, our internal communication. And, and, yeah. and that's important as Tony and I were standing on the car dealership lot <laughs> trying to sign letters so he could then take it to Annapolis. Okay, that was pretty scary. Yeah, but we want that teamwork. Uh, before we conclude from either of you ladies, anything you would like to add? Ms. Rowe? So I think um, the one thing I would like to see us really do next year is really focus on supporting the, a bill for public school construction funding because I know Kerwin is important, but the county and the, our county school system and our schools are in a serious bind over not having gotten this funding. And I know there's going to be a bill and a push next year. And I think that if, if we're there too, our committee, our board, this year the county council and the county executive were there, and I'm wondering if it might not be a good idea in the off season to meet with the Baltimore County delegation as a committee to be able to say, hey, this is a priority for us, and if that's something that we could do. I, 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 I okay. agree. That's one way to get to them before they get overwhelmed um, on the commission for the arts. That's exactly, we do that with the delegation. We also um, did it with the, um, the Baltimore County Council. Um, and that gives you a quiet time, a private time. You know, we just had a little hors d'oeuvre here and a little hors d'oeuvre there. And, and they enjoyed it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Miss Scott, anything you want to share? Um, no, I don't really have anything that I think you, Mr. Mazemore, for the um, update and legislation and and um, keeping us. Um, I think uh, you both have done a great job keeping us up to date with what's going on and current and making sure that we have um, uh, all of the latest um, legislative information. So, thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, can we give both the three of us, give the both of them a round of applause. Mr. Bayesmore came to us from his work with um, County Executive Cabinets, and you just came right in running. Mm -hmm. And um, we just snatched Miss Rosenberg, we just snatched you <laughs> in, and she never had a chance to exhale because of our starting time. As as right. as soon as she was named, right. she was producing documents. So she's never had an opportunity. So we'd like to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, for Madam me. Chair. <laughs> Okay, if there's nothing else, then this meeting is adjourned at five o'clock. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair. Thank you. Next year, they're going.